On Thursday, top Tory MP Michael Gove gave a speech to Parliament explaining the government's plans regarding the negotiations with the European Union. The government's vision for the UK's future relationship with the EU was outlined with crystal clarity by the Prime Minister during the general election campaign. And the election result comprehensively confirmed public support for our direction of travel. And we're off to a great lie. In December, 44% of people voted for the Tories, whereas 52.7% voted for parties that were committed to either stopping Brexit altogether or having a referendum on a different Brexit that would have kept us in the EU single market and customs union, i.e. pretty much stopping Brexit altogether. Carry on. We will not accept nor agree to any obligations where our laws are aligned with the EU or the EU's institutions, including the Court of Justice. The problem with that is, he then goes on to say... That, uh, ...this government is wholly committed to implementing the withdrawal agreement and also to giving effect to the political declaration, and specifically the political declaration's aim that we secure a comprehensive free trade agreement without tariffs, quotas and quantitative restrictions. Now, the political declaration that he's talking about describes a deal where we have frictionless trade at the borders by having, quote, comprehensive deep regulatory cooperation on either side. And it also makes specific reference to a level playing field, which basically means we committed to follow EU rules to protect trade. So you can't say you want to respect the political declaration and also say you want to completely move away from EU rules. We are, after all, only seeking relationships with the EU, which it has with other nations. So our proposal draws on existing EU agreements, such as the Comprehensive Economic Trade Agreement with Canada, yeah, but before, he just said that he wanted a deal with the EU that included zero quotas, but the deal that the EU has with Canada does include quotas on imports. It also doesn't really cover financial services, which is a huge part of our economy. And the EU was more than willing to offer zero tariff access to the US without the application of EU procedures to US standard setting. Yeah, and those talks failed, largely because the US and the EU couldn't agree on common standards and procedures. The EU has also argued the UK is a unique case, owing to its geographical location. But proximity is not a determining factor in any other FTA between other neighbouring states with large economies. Michael Gove may as well have just pulled out an economics textbook and set fire to it in the middle of the House of Commons. One of the most basic rules of economics is called the gravity rule, which basically means trade halves as distance doubles. You do more of your trade with countries that are physically close to you than you do with ones on the other side of the planet. And so because businesses in neighboring countries are going to be competing against each other, it's more important for neighboring countries to have a level playing field for fair competition. It is not the case that the EU requires of any other sovereign independent state submission to its legal order Okay, so he's saying that geography is irrelevant and that a country being physically close to the EU doesn't mean it would ever end up following the EU's rules. Let's have a look at some countries that are close to the EU. Norway, in the single market, follows EU rules. Liechtenstein, in the single market, follows EU rules. Iceland, in the single market, follows EU rules. Switzerland, partially integrated into the single market, follows EU rules. Turkey, in the EU's customs union, follows the EU's trade policy. So Michael Gove, that was complete bull. But the free trade agreement that we seek should ensure exactly the tariff-free access to markets and indeed the provisions on rules of origin that will allow the manufacturing sector to flourish in the future. So right there he's promising that manufacturing jobs in the UK will be safe because there'll be zero tariffs on goods manufactured in the UK when they go to the EU. Now first of all, the EU has already said that if you want full market access to the EU without any tariffs, then we need to follow the EU's rules so that there's a level playing field. And Michael Gove has ruled that out several times. Second of all, during the general election, Boris Johnson went to a factory in Sunderland where they make cars, 70% of which go to the EU, and he promised them that their jobs are safe because we keep following the EU's rules to ensure that trade runs smoothly. And then after the election, his government announced that that wasn't going to happen. So if you think UK manufacturing is safe in these people's hands, think again. And we will not link access to our waters to access to EU markets. Yeah, that sentence doesn't even make sense because it's not us who decide that. It is the EU who will say, if you want access to EU markets, give us access to your waters. And given that half the fish caught by British boats is ultimately sold to the EU, if we lose access to that market, fishermen in the UK are screwed. We also hope to conclude an agreement on law enforcement and judicial cooperation in criminal matters but we will not allow our own legal order to be compromised. Keeping this country safe requires international cooperation, sharing information about potential threats before they happen. 
Now, as members of the EU, we could share that information easily because we could all trust that we'd all follow the same rules in dealing with that information. For example, regarding data protection, human rights. Now, given that the UK government is taking a more hardline approach to security at the expense of human rights, don't you think the EU might just be a little bit concerned about giving us free access to the information without following any of the rules? And so if things do go that way, we will be less safe. In a number of key areas, we either exceed EU standards or have led the way to improve standards. He's treating people like idiots. The EU is about countries coming together to set minimum standards. So of course, countries within the EU will occasionally exceed those standards. Not to mention, our Prime Minister previously said that he didn't want to have to match the EU's social and environmental standards. We will be forced to match EU arrangements on the environment and social affairs and much else aside. There will be no border down the Irish Sea. <sighs> At this point, so many Tories have said that there will be border down the Irish Sea, that there won't be border down the Irish Sea. There will be. A, because the Brexit deal says there will be. B, if we have different rules to the EU, then there's either a border down the Irish Sea or a hard border in Northern Ireland which destroys peace. But we will always put the welfare of the British people first. If you were putting the interests of the British people first, you wouldn't be pursuing a Brexit that almost all relevant experts, including your own civil service, say will ruin British lives.